Hey guys, today I'm going to show you how to pull apart one of these new Outlander 1000s or 800s, the Gen 2 model with uh, the plastics that cover everything up where you do have to take some plastics off to get to the side of the clutch. First, we're going to take the seat off. Well, if you notice, this piece right here does pop up. There's nothing wrong with that. That's uh, perfectly normal. There are a couple of push pins on this machine. The, there are push pin pliers that are made to pull these things apart. If, uh, if you don't have a pair of these, uh, I'm sure you probably use screwdrivers or uh, pliers or whatever. There's three on this side panel. One here in the middle. There's one up here in the front. You can see it right under here when you look in this fender. It's just one spot where it's sticking out itching. There's one right here in the back. It also is in a, a very conspicuous spot. You can't miss it. Pull these three push pins out. And this side panel will be ready to come off. You will have to remove the key to get it out. And this guy's got to pull out and down and back all at the same time. You want to take the front up here, and it's got to come out from under this cowling, and it's got to go straight back this way. You've got to a pin is in a slot up here. It's got to go this way to get it out. It's not too easy. I haven't been fond of these these plastics here. These new machines. Once you get the front out. see this this long plastic pin is in a slot there it's got to go in a pretty good ways now, now once you get this guy out and work around and pull out the back right there just like that that was the most difficult part of these now you're looking at the clutch cover itself and what I use is a swivel socket eight millimeter I can reach every one of these with this socket. If you don't have one, just a standard uh, 8 millimeter socket will get to most of them. The ones under the bottom, there are holes in the skid plates where you can use a ratcheting wrench and come up from the bottom. I always leave the center bolt in. That would be the last one I pull out. got all the bolts out. This cover is a little trickier to get off than the Gen 1's because it's so tight with these floorboards. you got a little slot down here in the back where you've got to get your drain plug to fish out. You're going to have to fish it up and then kind of roll it. Try and work the front over and around the primary. And then it'll just slip right up. You got your primary and secondary. Looks identical as it has on all of the Can Am since 2005. Need a 19 millimeter or a three quarter to pull the primary bolt out. And since this primary didn't pop off while I had the bolt out, well, now that I've released the tension of the bolt, that means this uh, taper is stuck. So, what we're going to do is just take a small little rubber mallet and tap it. And see the spring tension pushed it off. You don't want to pull that bolt out. If that primary stays stuck in and you, you take the bolt completely out, it will shoot that guy across the room. So be sure uh, if, it, if it stays stuck to the inner half of the primary, use your mallet to bump it off before you pull the bolt all the way out. Because it's got a pretty good bit of spring tension. Now when you buy a kit from me, whether it uh, be a primary or secondary or anything, I always send you one of these little bolts. If you notice in the secondary, there's three holes. One of them is threaded. 
notches. This one down here. Take a 13 millimeter socket and thread this guy in just to spread the secondary open. Now you can pull the belt off. This belt looks like it's been slipped a time or two. If you'll notice on the belt, you look on the inside of the belt, the writing will be facing to you. Your rotation is forward this way because the clutch is spin and a counterclockwise rotation. The inside of the belt is the one that's going to be burned. If, if you have slipped a belt, the inside of the lip of this one-way bearing is what and the primary spinning is what causes you to have a groove burn in the belt. And you can see, maybe you can see here, you see the discoloration lines right there? That's where this primary has slipped this belt. You may, I may be able to get it just right. You can see uh, where this belt actually has a dip uh, cut out of it because the primary slipping has actually uh, chewed a, a good flat spot in the belt right here. So this belt is no longer perfectly smooth across the face. What happened was right here, the belt was spinning, uh, the primary was spinning and the belt was sitting still and so it burnt this, this big gouge, this flat spot in the belt. Once you've got that like that, pull your bolt back out of your secondary. Get you a 19 or a 3 quarter for your primary uh, puller. And you, you be sure to always hold in on the one-way bearing because the ratcheting action of this impact will cause this guy to jump around and if this bearing comes back just about a half of an inch there's springs and caps under here that will go flying across the room you don't want that to happen so always hold in on the one-way bearing as you're uh, hitting this with the impact now your primary is off To get the secondary off, we need a 17 millimeter. It's our standard Lefty Lucy as well. Now on these uh, secondary clutches, the new Gen 2 Outlander 1000s uh, have what is called a torsional spring. The spring has a pin on the top and bottom. These pins line up with a hole in the helix and it locks that spring in place. There's also a hole in the back side of this secondary clutch where this pin also lines up 